You know what the problem is? Most people don't have priorities in their life, but I don't have that problem. My priority today is those donuts right there. You see that? I've been coming to this donut shop for longer than most of y'all have been alive. That one right there. Where is it? <laughs> I'll bet you won't. Hey guys, know. welcome live from Lakewood, California. Lakewood, California. Tomorrow city today. Okay, that's kind of ironic to me because this morning about two hours ago, I left yesterday's city tomorrow acting. Hey, you hear that jet? I like jets because they take people the hell away from you. Uh, I am joined by somebody on episode and it's somebody that one of the very few people I can stand to be around for more than five minutes. I mean, this is not like to the extent of Mrs. Olson or anything, but I think we're going to have a good time and we're going to uh, learn something because I'm about education. You know that. Remember my guitar, my first guitar? You would have to be dead because I not to remember because I've shown you so many times. It's got C6 Steve on there. You've coveted this yourself, right? So at the end of the day, the first guitar I ever made is pretty much a piece of crap, but it's where I put matchbooks on. And C6 Steve is where the inspiration came for the matchbooks. And I will give you the episode or the video link up there right about now. It's popping up there, that iCard, in which I saw C6 Steve playing Don't Know Why She Loved Me But She Do. And the guitar was a complete junk pile. Had a spatula for flipping burgers and it had these matchbooks. Now, I've become afflicted with Matchbook similar to how Troy Murrah is afflicted with Beverly D'Angelo. What's that about? Hey, I'll give you a link right up there too and down below. You, you don't want to miss that one because Troy Murrah, he's around here somewhere in the greater Long Beach metropolis. Anyway, when I picked these matchbooks out, we got one from Andrea's, which is over Ventura. I like to eat there. We got American Snowplow. I used to run big cranes, American made cranes. I spent uh, uh, probably 15, 16 years in the illustrious Las Vegas, Nevada. I had a couple contracts over there doing palm trees. And then going way back, Getter Trucking out of South Dakota was, it was one of their trucks that I hitchhiked to my first job in the oil field that put me on this long, illustrious, and highly successful career. Okay, so the purists might think I've digressed, but I think I've progressed, and now we're digging junk out of guitar shops, at real guitars, a real luthier, Whoever come up with that word? Does that even sound right? Luthier. What do you do? Oh, I work on Luther. Luther Dickinson or what? So anyway, at the end of the day, I'm progressing ahead and uh, I'm, I don't know, yard sailing up real guitars now. And I've got one with me that you all are going to know is the Texas Junk Pile. And of course, I need to put matchbooks on it. And I'm going to cover up a, a, a neck that's got whatever they call them things, fret markers or anyway, the normal stuff and who wants to be normal. But I'm looking for specific matchbooks and when you find them on eBay and you talk about the cost of your build, let's say you're gonna build these things, unless you're doing like Highway 66 or Vegas like clone guitars, blowing them up by the hundreds, who wants those? Oh, I'm sorry, you do? Oh, hey, give me a dislike and get with Metric Hater and Dextru Hater and whoosh. Anyway, matchbooks can cost you like five, six, seven bucks in shipping. So the next thing you know, you've got 25 bucks into a standard size net because it takes about five matchbooks doing them my way. Hey, I'm going to give you an iCard up there on how we do this because if you put a matchbook uh, in its regular thickness uh, in one of these spots between the frets, it's going to raise everything up and You'll be able, your fingering and all that stuff that real guitar players do that I don't know anything about gets messed up and your matchbook is gone forever. So these are real matchbooks. So the dilemma is how do you find the matchbooks you want and get them economically or preferably free so you can put them on so somebody can enjoy it. You can build a guitar for somebody that's unique to them and not spend 25 bucks before you even get out of the barn in the morning so barn or bar hey i'm not a sinner and i'm from wisconsin so it's barn you i can't i'm not a catholic priest i cannot 
what's the word? Absolve you of your sins. Anyway, I'm going to introduce you to somebody right now. I drove all the way over here to Lakewood, California. And by the way, there is a chick flick teal painted house on this street. The stars are lining up. Let's meet my friend, Mr. Matchboy. All right, sorry I lied, but you know what? That's a regular occurrence, and I don't think I'm going to be in hell over that. I got bigger things than that. Anyway, here it is. Look at this. This is the Texas junk pile with all of its amendments or whatever you want to call it. We're going to put a floating bridge on it. We're going to put this. Is this not the biggest piezo you've ever seen in your whole life? We're going to put this under here. Build a plate like we did for the Mississippi junk pile. You want to see that episode up there, but look at that. Ain't that pretty? Oh, gee, yeah, you know me. And we got... Ooh, look at that gold foil pickup got a Texas map to put on I already been doing some stuff with here I don't know about hey I found a place to get eggs check that out that's cool anyway see this this neck is bare and I do have a few matchbooks that I collected up at great cost to me hill top hmm is anything like ZZ Top and Dusty Hill? I don't know. And then I got a few of these. Oh, there's some oil field stuff. Can't live without that. So, um, but it took me forever to find these and I'm not, oh, I love Cactus Court. When you pull into that, you see a motel that says has a bunch of cactuses all over it. Oh, that's enticing, isn't it? Anyway, let's cut the crap and meet Mr. Matchbook. All right, well, Let's get rid of this junk, and I can get to talking about matchbooks. So, like Ken said, going on and buying these matchbooks, these are matchbooks that I've actually acquired. Uh, they come in different shapes, different sizes. One of the first things I have to do is take the matches out of the matchbook. Then I get them set up on a piece of paper. I use the blue tape. And then you can put them in the scanner uh, for the process of match booking your fret board. I've uh, some of the ones that I like a little bit more than others. Do not covet these. I put in these uh, protective sleeves. Get them on all over eBay and different places. And these are Lakewood City specific matchbooks for a build I'm going to be doing that Ken inspired me to do. I've also kind of looked at some stamps and things that might actually go into something like that. All right, so I put everything in a binder. Look at this, this is a big matchbook, believe it or not. I, I had to buy special binder paper just to hold it. But these are some, uh, these are some cigar box labels that I was able to find. Get a lot of this on eBay and Etsy. And like Ken was pointing out, these are just different matchbooks. And what I do is I scan them and I keep them going uh, on, the, uh, on the website so that I can share them with my friends and whoever else is doing some builds. And we could talk about maybe doing something like that later on. Here's 7up, buy it by the case. And if that didn't work, you can always jump to Tums. So this is a collection. Going back to some of the things, as Ken said, I live in Lakewood. That's tomorrow city today, which makes it easy to find things because from yesterday. But this is the old cow bowl, if you're in the familiar. The official moose lodge, the order of the moose. We have forum cafeterias, the Dutch village bowling alley and lanes. There was Johnny J's Supper Club. If you didn't go there, you didn't get lucky. Taraxco's Mexican restaurants, the Coral Room, the Acropolis Coffee Shop, Selby's Union Service Station. There's a remnant of this when another location in Long Beach. The Cloud Motel, where you slept on a cloud, and the good old Lakewood Country Club. Somehow I'm gonna make all those work into some fretboard. 
Okay, so you want to do matchbooks for your guitar build, and you're you're on a budget. You're a little tighter than me. So here's what you do. Go to Google. Start searching matchbook covers. You're going to see a lot of pop-ups for eBay. You're going to see a lot of pop-up for Etsy's. And you can go ahead and look at those just to get you a sense of what's going on with that. And then skip it. Search Flickr. Flickr is a website where people get to upload their collections of images. And you could go there and search that and you could find images. Let's say you're doing a build like someone we know that's about Texas. Well, you can go to Flickr and you can search Texas. Get Longhorn stuff, you can get SMU stuff, you can get all kinds of stuff. For Dallas, Texas, and every other city there, might even find something from LaGrange. But it's the easiest way to download a digital file and make sure it's high resolution because you want the images to be able to pop. And what's nice about that, you could use apps on your cell phone, you could use apps on your computer if you need to touch up those colors and get things digitized so it's all good so let's say you decide to buy some matchbooks you decided to go on to eBay spend five bucks with shipping and picked up a few of these things it's kind of, it's kind of as we talked about they're thick they're a lot thicker than you think because these are cardboard it's not paper and so you got to go ahead and you digitize these things so that you can use it the way you need to do it. How do you do that? Tape it onto a piece of paper and you scan it. Now this takes time. You buy them like this, they're already flat. Um, some, in this case, these guys have cut off the strike strip that you would uh, light your matches on. Some people like to save them, you get them long like this. This is the reason why they're different. And need different cases for that too. So keep that in mind when you're looking at what you're buying. And in this case, I kept the little strike strips on the paper. But when you scan them, take, take your time to do this and then do it in a way that makes sense. These are all Camel cigarettes, for example. That makes sense. Same thing for the other sheet. Maybe you have a collection of um, hotels that you want to do. Well, put a bunch of hotels on the sheet. That way you know what you're doing. Sometimes this is a, a hotel out in Virginia and has a what they claim to be the one of the natural wonders of the world. That might be something of interest to you. And this is another one in Phoenix, Arizona, where I got a friend of mine who lives and I kind of thought this was cool. But take your time in digitizing them. I try to do about 600 DPI. Don't use your standard settings. Try to use photo imaging settings. Uh, you get a better resolution. When you go to print your, your files, you get a better file. Um, it takes and take your time in naming these things so you can sort and find them. Uh, I've made that mistake in the past and it's a lot harder to fix it later than it is while you're doing it. That's that's a big tip. But all in all, it takes you about takes about five to ten minutes just to do a sheet because it takes time to organize these, sort them around, get the layout done, open up your scanner. You got to scan the thing in. Take the digital file, make sure before you move on to the next one that that digital file actually works. And you can see everything clearly, zoom in. Uh, you get a good image on a zoom, you know you got a good file to work with. Then you come across a really cool matchbook that you wanna make sure you remember where it's at. Something like a chick flick teal matchbook. You wanna make sure that you digitize that and you catalog it so you know where the heck it is when you need to get it for your build. So then you come up with the theme build and you got matchbooks that you want to put in. You come back and you got those high resolution images that allows you to expand it this way, stretch them out that way a little bit, and it doesn't warp the quality of the image. It looks like it was made that way and no one's gonna know that it wasn't. This way when you go to do your build, you could do what you gotta do, but make sure you catalog it, you got the names and everything about it. I like to put, that in this case, the name of the place on the matchbook. This is Poplar Cabins, uh, tourist cabins, and where they're from. In this case, this is in Tus Tuscaloosa, Tuscola, Illinois. Um, who knows, you're gonna make, do an Illinois build. You may just do a build that's chick flick teal. 
Either way, you'll be able to identify that file when you need it. Sometimes when you get these files, you know matchbooks have two parts to it. There's the front part and the back part. And you get your digital imagery right, you get your resolution right, well you might just like one part of the matchbook. You don't need the full length, you just need part of it. So then you could go ahead and take that high res digital image that you made and go ahead and put this on the back of your guitar or something like that. You don't have any problems with it. You can't tell that this was something that was only two inches big at any one point in time. When you digitize it right, it'll print right, and you'll be able to do anything you want with it. So I hope you use this information so that you can get started on your matchbook collection just like I started. I've only been doing this since about March. Uh, it's become something I've become a bit of a Seth Swiss, but it is what it is. And um, I'm gonna keep doing this. But I can't stay here all day. I got a concert to get to, got some things to do, and I got a little bit of uh, sugar down, so I'm gonna have to go get something sweet in my mouth pretty quick. I told you, oh, look at it. Oh, it's for sale. A chick flick teal house for sale. Oh God, everything chick flick teal. That's chick flick teal. Oh, look at, you can see me in the mirror. It's actually a window. I think y'all knew that, but see, I have chick flick teal. Everything chick flick teal, including the base of the fountain with the frog. Frog is doing his moral and civic obligation to make sure nothing about this chick flick teal gets defaced. Oh my God, I can't even believe it. I don't think I'll ever leave hey guys, here. That's it, we're ending this episode with Mr. Matchbook in front of the chick flick teal house. And I'll tell you what, we're not really social distancing. I mean, did you ever really need advice from a county health official paid for by, with your tax dollars to stay away from people like that look like us yeah okay hey thank you mr matchbook some of you lucky people will get one of his stickers and oh well the rest won't see you next time oh don't give me a like come on you gotta like this subscribe, one subscribe right or send out emails tell your friends about it tell your friends with computers about it